if the virus fears are already altering how global companies conduct business, that's what we've just shown you, let's get some interpretation from our Federal Reserve Day power team, CFRA Chief Investment Strategist Sam Stovall, former Wells Fargo Chief Economist John Sylvia, and Brian Nick, who worked at the New York Fed and is now Chief Investment Strategist at Nuveen, which has an asset under management of about $1.1 trillion. I'm glad all of you are here. Sam, I'll begin with you. What did you make? Interpret what the Fed Chair said about the coronavirus, and do you think that's why the stocks have uh, paired their gains? Well, I think he was acknowledging coronavirus is an uncertainty that uh, is affecting uh, the globe right now, but he just doesn't know how deep it's going to go. And so as a result, he's indicating that he is going to keep his finger on the pulse uh, of this uh, and make policy if need be. I think what was more important, in my opinion, was uh, basically saying that inflation is something that they're having a hard time uh, in a sense, uh, encouraging, if you will. And as a result, we probably will end up seeing rates remain low for a longer period of time. Well, yeah. And John, not only did he talk about inflation and that the Fed did not want to be patient about this below 2% level, but he also talked about asset valuations and specifically said they are, quote, somewhat elevated. Let me just put that in regular terms. Stocks are too rich at these valuations. What did you think about that comment? Well, the challenge for the Fed is that there is a term structure of interest rates, Liz, and to the extent that they're lowering short-term rates, they're buying all these bills, it lowers, and it has since October, lowering the two-year and five-year U.S. Treasury rates, which in effect are competition for equities. Those lower rates do help finance corporate bonds, and they would increase or elevate uh, equity values. So there is an interest rate effect with the Fed, even though they are saying that the policy is staying, you know, pretty much steady, it is having a positive effect on the equity market. Okay. Indeed, we do have this huge expansion. Brian, this is not an easy thing to deal with. He outlined beginning first with his statement that the expansion continues, the labor market looks incredibly strong, and we still see some very big positives in all of this. However, doesn't that then possibly lead to some real problems down the line if you keep rates this low. I think that's right. And my big takeaway from his comments were really that the bar for both raising and cutting rates is actually quite high, perhaps higher than the markets had expected coming into this. I think we all knew that the likelihood the Fed was going to raise interest rates this year was quite low. The point about inflation being stubbornly low, I think, is well taken. But there's enough positives out there. And he actually reiterated he thinks global policy uncertainty has diminished. He actually is cautiously optimistic about global growth. Those were the two things that according to Powell himself, were the reasons behind the Fed cuts last year. So if he's not as worried about them as he was, I think the market, which continues to expect and price in interest rate cuts this year, I think they're setting themselves up for disappointment. Well, disappointment, but are they? And this was so interesting. Did you not think so, John, when he was asked specifically about the it's not QE? That means they're buying so many Treasury bills. I mean, specifically, they talked about how billions of dollars worth of, of Treasuries are being bought by the Federal Reserve that at some point, if things continue to get so good, they will have to scale back and then you're faced with another taper tantrum. Well, I think I'll pick up on Brian's comment. Uh, the market, to some extent, is discounting a ease in the federal funds rate. Uh, listening to Chairman Powell, I got no impression that they were ready to cut rates anytime soon. And so as a result of that, I can see why there's a disappointment in the equity market with respect to pricing future Fed moves. $390 billion over five months. That's what the Fed has added to the balance sheet, which we just showed you. Sam, for the investor, for the stock investor, the bond investor, you know, tell us where you see opportunity when you look across the spectrum of all the, the sectors out there. Well, we're seeing a response today where investors are, again, gravitating more toward the cyclical areas uh, that basically saying that there is likely to be some spurring of economic activity. And so as a result, technology, industrials, materials, communication services likely to do well, whereas the defensive areas that investors had jumped into because of the worries over the coronavirus, such as consumer staples, real estate utilities, uh, are giving back some 
some of their gains. So I think the real question is what's going to, uh, what are earnings going to do for us for the remainder of this reporting period and into 2020? Because I think a lot of the uh, move that we have seen over the last three months has been an anticipation that the economy and corporate profits would start to be ramping higher. You know, tomorrow, Brian, we're getting fourth quarter GDP and we're expecting what? What do you expect to see here? Well, we think it's going to be the slowest quarter of 2019. The good news is it's backward-looking data, so we're looking at October, How November, December. How could it be December. the slowest? We had such a bang-up holiday season, did we not? Yeah, consumer spending should continue to be the main support. U.S. housing market is also strengthened, so residential construction could be adding positively. Okay. Uh, we still saw just this morning a big blowout in the trade deficit uh, for goods, which is going to tend to uh, contribute negatively to GDP. And we probably will continue to see, because we still have this manufacturing recession here and around the world, a drawdown in inventories, which is also negative for GDP. And businesses are not making new investments yet. That would be a positive offset to that. All right. So as we look at the Dow Jones Industrials, it's up 88 points, but well off the highs of the session. Gentlemen, thank you. John Sylvia, Sam Stovall, and Brian Nick. We'll see you next time, because the Fed meets multiple times during the year.